Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So a warm welcome to everyone. As usual, we're back with our Thursday travels. Well, today, of course, is rather exciting because we're visiting Singapore. So I have a slight bias towards it or against it. We'll see. A visiting, which is home for me. And uh, we have our uh, champion and our chapter member. We have Nidhi Jane and we have Kathy Torres, who are both in Singapore. And uh, back to our first day travels, basically, we're their inside track. Many people have told us that, you know, they come here to listen because uh, especially it supports the bank decentralization agenda. This is a way to check out the different locations. What do they offer? Also to meet the people you might be friends with when you uh, relocate to those particular locations. So uh, that's why um, people really enjoy it for a whole variety of reasons too. So as usual, I'll hand over to the speakers. Uh, this is a discussion. So if you have questions, please unmute uh, or just put your questions in the chat box and we will uh, um, read them out and our panelists will, will answer you. And in this case, since I'm Singaporean, I may throw in my two cents worth. Okay, so uh, Nidhi, over to you. So. Can you paint a realistic picture of what life okay. is like for sick people in Singapore? I know it's a favorite location. Everybody tells me in DC, if they have to decentralize, they're going to Singapore. So, yeah. do you think that's so, good? Uh, is that true or not true? <laughs> it's true. I mean, when I moved to uh, Singapore, I really missed DC. I missed the you know, the weather, the change in the seasons, because Singapore just has like one weather. It's like hot and yeah. humid throughout the year and or it's raining. So, <laughs> but uh, life is pretty good here and uh, easy to settle down as well. It's a small city, uh, easy to get to like the, it's well connected. There's good, you know, uh, uh, good trains and, you know, uh, buses and taxis and, easy to get from one corner of the city to anywhere you want to go to. And and also, uh, I think currently during the COVID times, uh, kind of glad that we're in Singapore because the government is so strict and, and people follow the rules as well. And due to that, I think they've kept the situation under control. And most of the cases have been uh, foreign dormitory workers. So there's not a lot of cases in the community. And uh, it's impressive that the government takes a lot of precautions. It's like you go to any supermarket or any mall, you have to do a safe entry check. So you scan your NRIC. So the government can track where you are, what time. And if you get infected, they can track people around you who are going to be infected and they can quarantine you. So they actually are actually tracking you, where you're going. And so that's, that's good as well as bad. But... Uh, yeah, uh, I think we had a lockdown for about two and a half months and we're still in phase two, but ever since it's opened up, life is fairly normal. Uh, you have to wear masks when you go outside, but other than that, it's quite normal. Uh, you cannot, when you go out to a restaurant, you cannot meet more than five friends or when you have people home, you cannot have more than five friends over. So some of the rules which we still have to follow till we move into phase three and schools have started, they're operational. Uh, during the lockdown, the pools and uh, the gyms were closed, but right now everything's open. And uh, I think uh, the community cases in are in single digits. So there's not much to worry about. Yeah. And, and also if, Singapore is an amazing place to raise kids. A lot of parks and activities and fun things to do for kids as well as adults. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know a lot of Singaporeans in DC are saying they want to go home because it's so safe. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. true, you're right. They're really strict. I mean, when you are either going to be fine or going to prison, hey, Better keep your mouth on, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not going worth yeah. going to prison for, but that's the upside yeah. and the downside. So, 
I was going to ask you both. Uh, Singapore is one of the most expensive cities in the world. How do you find cost of living? And then we will cycle into housing. <laughs> Kathy, do you want to say something? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's expensive. I actually feel like it's more expensive than being in the States in a certain way um, because food in the groceries is more expensive, I think. Like, I feel like $10 the for a mango if you're from Manila. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like $6 or something for a mango here. I mean, six Singaporean dollars. So, I mean, I feel like my grocery bill in the States was a lot less compared to here. Uh, electricity is really expensive too and because it's so hot our air conditioning is on like 24 7. i mean i have a two-year-old so it's impossible to just like yeah to keep the fan on um um like for your cell phone it's pretty standard but um travel expenses like for transportation with taxis are pretty expensive but like the train is okay and it's super efficient so so that's fine. So I think it, and then eating out, of course, is like really expensive and alcohol, um, obviously. So it's expensive, but, um, you know, I think the bank kind of uh, provides a good package to kind of uh, compensate for how expensive it is. Um, yeah, but like, I think for for education, for example, I'm not sure about like the education benefits here like i think it only starts at a certain age i think five years old needy am i right yeah like grade one yeah so and then only for five years i think yeah yeah so that's the thing and like is here is really really expensive so that's something to consider um when moving here i think it's it'd be nice to stay a couple of years and then i don't know i mean it's hard i think if you're a, in a single income family um, harder, more manageable, definitely, if you were double income. So what about housing then? How would you go as a help a family? What would you think they need to think about if they were relocating to Singapore when it comes to housing? Uh, for housing, I think our rent is pretty fair compared to what we were paying in D.C. And we were living in like near the, the, the bank at the time. And I'm, I'm in Britain now, so the rent was okay. But um, yeah, I think I think for housing it's pretty fair. Like there's a large um, like variety of different like apartments that you could you could find. And then of course you can get help. We're much more affordable here than than being in the states. What would you say then about housing? If I were going to Singapore, what would you tell me? So I think, Sing sorry to interrupt. I think Singapore has like, uh, even the HDBs, which are subsidized by the government. So uh, uh, you can consider those as well. If you find living in Singapore's expensive, so you can consider even the HDBs, which are the government houses. And you have the landed properties and condos. Yeah, or I think if you live farther away from Orchard, I think there are bigger uh, spaces there for a lot um, more affordable rent. I think like the area we're in is a little bit more expensive because it's like pretty central. Yeah, you are 9, 10, 11, District 9, 10, 11, Newton is 10 or 9, oh. I forget, right? 9, 10, 11 is always kind of yeah. pricey, yeah. But yeah, I mean, overall, like um, when when I found out I was going to move here, I, I wasn't that excited because I really love D.C. But now that I'm here, I really love it. Like um, it's just everything is so efficient. It's so safe. It's so baby friendly. And even if it's hot, it's so green. So you kind of don't feel the heat as much, I think. I mean, I think the the plants kind of compensate for like the humidity in a certain way but yeah it's a good place to live great
I think. I would think, uh, Daniela, that for what it's worth, I think uh, people like uh, Kathy and Edie, our, our grandfather, they cannot change their contract. Maybe it's for people who are new going in, but I doubt that theirs could be changed. Is yours changed? Maybe <laughs> they don't seem to think so. Is that true? You know? Yvonne? Yeah? You know, we can't see you. And I think part of your uh, comment kind of got um, eaten up. Oh, oh, I see. The so comment can you... in the box, the comment in the box says, as of July 2020, WB has no longer, no longer provides housing benefits for Singapore. Is that correct? Um, I don't think that's true. I think they they have cut off the housing benefits. They have cut off. I mean, they're definitely paying less than what they used to pay before, but they've not cut it off completely. Uh, you're on mute. You're Yvonne. on mute, Ivan, dear. What about schooling? Um, I think the coverage for schools is provided only after the age of five. No, no, I mean choice Wait, of schooling. I mean, if you were going to, you know, if you had school age children, what advice would you give? Be, well, the school, the there's course. plenty of um, international schools and uh, even the local schools, if you want to consider. The, the schooling is quite good, but I think it can be expensive. Even the... Even preschools are crazily expensive. Like, so give us some yeah. idea about what you mean by that, Nidhi. Just like a... Okay. <laughs> you want a number? So uh, uh, you so you can start school at the age of 18 months. And three days a week, half day, can, cause you, can cost you around 1,200 per month. And... Uh, if you want them like five days a week, half day from nine to twelve thirty, that can cost you around two thousand dollars per month. Same dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And for the for the older ones, how do they get to the school? Is uh, I mean, of course, it's a small town, but do they have a bus service like the international because school all, and all? Yeah, all the international schools have a bus services, and even if you opt not to go for that, I think Singapore's a safe city. You can even ask your child to take a taxi to school or, you know, in case if they miss the bus, it's it's pretty safe. I yeah. think for the bus service, though, Nidhi, if I, I, I might be mistaken, but I just heard from my friends, it's really expensive. It's about $2,000 okay. per term. For the bus service, <laughs> so, pay, so one pays extra for the bus, then. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a school buses. Uh, that I know. I that I can support. We have friends with WB in Singapore, and it actually ties up both Kathy and Nidhi's comment that what happens is that they put their children in a taxi, and they are they have two kids. One is well, when they started putting them in the taxi, they were about. 12 and 12 and eight, the older brother and the younger sister. And I was like, what? You know, when I was growing up, we, my grandmother would not allow us in a taxi. It's like, what? Are you kidding? But anyway, obviously things have changed. And they send and they send their children in a taxi uh, to school because taxis are cheaper than what Kathy says. The, the designated yeah. school buses are very, very expensive. Correct. Yeah. But it's very safe, and the children come home sometimes by bus, 10 years old, by themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I see some kids on the train by themselves. Singapore is a, a, a very safe city, actually, I would say. I mean, it's not that there is no crime, but vis-a-vis, -vis, I mean, this is my opinion. I always felt that if I could walk down the street as a, as a woman at... 2 or 3 a.m. at night and still feel safe. The panic would be my own, generated by myself, not by e e exterior uh, uh, elements. I don't know whether you you think that's true. Yeah, I really believe that. Like I was going home one time, this was pre-COVID, pre-lockdown, um, at around 
kind of not that late, but like midnight, and I was on the bus, and I wasn't even thinking about it. And only when I got home, I was telling my husband, "Okay, I think this is the only place where you know you take public transportation and you don't even like look around to see if it's safe. It just feels like you're in a big village." And um, yeah, and and it and then on top of that, it's super clean. Like, I think the trains are cleaner than my house. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we love it here. Yeah. Thanks, for Mini, for putting the exchange rate uh, into the chat box. So those of you whose math is good, you 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 sort of know the 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 pricing. So let's get to the favorite topic of spouses. Uh, which is, can we work? And what are employment opportunities like in Singapore? I would say it was fairly easy to find a job in Singapore. And uh, I mean, if you're not a spouse of WBFN, you would, ha- I mean, once you apl- uh, find a job, the employer who hires you is responsible for uh, sponsoring your work permit. I think they also have to pay something. Uh, to the MOM to get the work permit. But because we are spouses of WBFN, uh, there's a local uh, uh, head here called Sham. I don't know if you know her. So she helps out with our work permit. So um, so when I found a job, I just had to get an application from my employer, get it signed and submit it to Sham. She would work on the process and it hardly took me three weeks and I got my work permit. It was very easy. Wow. That is absolutely not unheard of in Thursday travels. So, Nidhi, what do you do? What's your job? Tell us. What's it like to work with Singaporeans? You say anything you like. <laughs> to either verify or not verify. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm not in corporate, but I'm a yoga teacher. I teach yoga. And, and you, where do you where do you teach it? So I'm uh, employed by this company uh, and they usually assign me clients in different places or to studios or, and uh, I've also been working recently with uh, a community where I'm training uh, mothers, like uh, training moms for, an, through yoga for easy pregnancy, birth and baby as well. Wow, Nadi, that sounds so amazing. That's really, Thank you so really much. Amazing. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a mobile career you can just go of anywhere. course and it's yeah it's part-time and I, I don't have and and also like since my son is still so small I didn't want to have like a pretty hectic job this is flexible I get to spend time with him and work and and also Singapore's amazing for the fact that you can have like live and help us I forgot to mention this that's the biggest privilege uh, that you can have in Singapore. So the helpers will live with you and they'll help you with your grocery shopping, cooking and taking care of your child, picking your child from school. They do everything. And and the price is quite reasonable as well. Uh, they stay with you in your house. And I think compared to DC, the price is really reasonable. So even if you want to go out in the night, like your helper's at home, she takes care of the child when it's sleeping, you can go out. So that's something which we enjoy here. Well, we have comment, uh, questions here saying, uh, oh. is it the same as private sector? Meaning, you know, is it as quick? And what about self-employment? Um, so you can have, I'm not sure about self-employment, but I a lot of people, uh, you can set up like your own company and uh, work as well, get your own work permit. But I think that's done through World Bank as well. Yeah, I, I would think, uh, because actually in before, I set up the initial relocation support for uh, before STAM, uh, when the same mm-hmm. office uh, started you know the the first the right at the beginning uh, what 2010 i think 2011 that that time uh just to say i think the work permit is handled by the office yeah so uh any form of work employment that you need you will speak with the office and the office will uh order uh will give you the forms and tell you what to do and stuff i mean just for what it's worth in singapore 
we are extremely rule oriented. So I can say anything I like because I'm Singaporean will consider be considered derogatory. So yeah, it is one of those things. It's a very safe place and you can get things done, but it's exactly there's no room for no maneuver. If the law says you will do one, two, three, everybody will see to it that you do it. And it's quite interesting. There's no no argument because they will just tell you the government says so. And once they say that, everybody goes, oh, okay, get it. There's no room. So it, it's quite straightforward. But you have to follow exactly what is the stipulation. Is that correct? Of course. So so <laughs> I have a lot of friends as well who get their work permit from one company, but then they are doing a lot of freelance t teaching private classes teaching at studios as well. And if you get caught, that's really not nice. You can be fined. Or even if you teach without a work permit, the MOM can just come and, you know, fine you and arrest you. So you better just stick to what you do and wherever you're registered, you don't want to take a chance. Yes, I mean, when we were there, my husband was in a work permit because he's not Singaporean. And he had to sign the Internal Security Act which means that if you do anything in 24 hours, they throw you out with no explanation. So I think that's still there. And push come to shove with foreigners, unfortunately, non-Singaporeans, which we just revoke your work permit, that's it. So from that sense, as Nidhi says, everybody's very, very law-abiding and they keep to it. We have a question here about yoga and professions. Does Singapore have a licensing process before you can provide a service? Uh, there's no licensing process. You can <laughs> just show you can just show them that you're certified and you can teach. <laughs> the license is the government, Mary. <laughs> yeah. If they say yes, you go. If they say no, you don't. You break the law, they fine you or go to prison. It's quite simple. Options are not that many. Uh, so, you know, this is the thing that makes Singapore rather attractive. I, I mean, I know that everybody, it's the top location of WBG. Everybody wants to go there because it is expensive. But as Kathy has said, uh, home help is, 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 is cheap, uh, housing, lots of green spaces, transportation, well permitted in three hours, but it is expensive. Okay. So, um, how do you find, do you know, how do they find foreign qualifications or spouses? Is that well accepted? It is well accepted. And I think English is uh, spoken, so they're pretty welcoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're open. So, what would you say then? Are there any unique challenges of moving to Singapore? As uh, good as it may be. Unique challenges. Mm. I can't think of anything because it's it's just it was just easy to settle down here. <laughs> yeah, the healthcare is good and you have a nice support group here. So even if you want something from a pediatrician to a gynecologist to a skin doctor, you know, we're there to help you out. So, <laughs> so this uh, support group is, <clears throat> I mean, what I'm trying to find out is, is a WBFN uh, yeah. the primary support group for you there or um, when you first arrived, let's say. And Kathy, you can answer as well. So trying to assess the role of WBFN in Singapore. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to compare it to DC because for me, when I moved to DC, everyone's so welcoming. I felt at home, but actually when I moved to Singapore, I felt a little lonely and the W even didn't really have a lot of activities. I think when people move in, they already have like a set of friends. So even when we would organize something, nobody would like show a lot of interest. I don't know. Um, uh, so I would say it's not that welcoming, but so when I took uh, over as the WBFN coordinator, I, I thought I'll, you know, make a change, but then 
I don't know. I, I just felt like it's not that easy because I think Kathy knows whenever I would organize something, there would be no turn ups. Like I organized <laughs> a meet up, nobody would come. <laughs> but I tried. <laughs> she really tried. Yeah, you're the most <laughs> I have the same experience. When I moved here, um, I visited Needy in her home. <laughs> and then literally, yeah. that was like the one time I met up with somebody from the WBFN. But I don't know if maybe it's because you're right. When you move here, you already have like a group of friends as opposed yeah. to um, moving to the States. And it's and of course, it's the head office. So you know, it's, it's, it's a totally different environment. So yeah, that def- definitely the WBFN presence isn't as strong. I feel like maybe people have their own thing, you know, going on. Yeah. I think, you know, um, we lived in the Philippines and uh, we had friends who moved to Singapore and their comment is exactly as Nidhi and Kathy had supported they said that in the Philippines, because life is not as easy as Singapore, the community is more cohesive because the expectation is, oh, hi, Kathy, how are you doing? You know, can you find that, you know, this was in, 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 in the uh, 90s, right? Can you, do you need help? Whereas in Singapore, as Needy says, you are supposed to be all right, Jack, you know, it's fine. There's no problem. This is so nice. What is your problem? So I think people tend to be slightly embarrassed to say, you know, I'm a bit lonely. How can you be lonely when you're in such a perfect place and there's all these things you can do, it's so safe. So I think somehow hardship in an odd sort of way knits a community together. And, and, you know, so people want to be together because I need your help. Whereas when I can do my thing, you can do your thing exactly as you experience when you organize something, it's a lot, sorry, I'm too busy to come. Now, we have a comment from, from Saran here, and I will read it because uh, it's about benefits, uh, response to the housing question. He says, about housing, the general rule is no. It is considered it, meaning Singapore, same as headquarters. However, in some instances, if they have to give it, the contribution equals to the difference between the cost of a two-bedroom in D.C., as compared to a two bedroom similar neighborhood in the assignment location for staff without children or the difference uh, between four bedrooms for staff with one child. I work at, in the bank on a temporary HR assignment. So uh, Sarah, would you like to unmute and uh, make some comment? You're welcome to. Hi, sorry. How are you? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, did I, did I get it right uh, with your yes. comment? Correct. So, yes. So, the rules have changed as Danielle, it's, I don't know if it was Danielle or Daniela mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. Singapore no longer receives housing benefits as a general rule. However, if uh, the housing you're trying to get is more expensive, than what you will get in DC in a similar neighborhood, they will pay you the difference that you adding to that uh, local to that uh, housing cost. If in DC you are paying two thousand dollars for a two bedroom, but you go to Singapore, it's two thousand five hundred dollars for two bedroom. They're gonna pay you the five hundred dollars. They're not gonna give you two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. I don't know. Are you? Are you on temporary assignment now with HR as no, a bank? I left. Now I work for an American company. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for that knowledge, the update on policy. That's great. Sure. And nice to see you, Saran. All right. Nice to see you, Panmini. Yes, too. I do remember you. At our hangouts earlier on in lockdown, you have all the kids at home. You I remember I have, that. I have three at <laughs> home. <laughs> yes, yes, That's yes. Scary. Uh, and I'm reading here two more questions. You have to renew your work permit every year. And the second question is a good one. Given how expensive it is, what do you do for fun and recreation? So we don't have to renew our work permit every year. 
un until your employer wants to uh, fire you, you you can work. And what do you do for fun in Singapore? Um, well, there's a lot of museums and there's Sentosa. So uh, I, I think for children, there's like a lot of activities. And, um, I, and you have gardens by the bay and uh, you have all the touristy places to do. And I think it's quite reasonable. It's not too expensive. Yeah, I agree. Like I go with my baby to the botanical gardens at least two or three times a week and that's free and it's <laughs> great. It's, it's like the perfect, they have a children's playground there, which is just amazing. Like I wish I had a playground when I was a kid. It's just, and it's free. And um, yeah, so lots of green spaces and um, you're right, Sentosa. So that's the thing though with Singapore in terms of travel, like local travel, there's nowhere to go. I mean, Sentosa isn't really a beach. It's more like a, like a pier. <laughs> it's like all ships, but um but yeah, in terms of recreational activities, it isn't too expensive. I mean, unless you go out on a wild night and like, I don't know, spend on a lot of alcohol or something, then, then you'd be in tr trouble. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty manageable. So there's a question about favorite local activities and what about travel pre-pandemic in the greater region? I guess Southeast Asia, going to Malaysia. Do you go to Johor often? Uh, so um, I do a lot of hikes uh, in uh, Johor. There's a lot of hikes around. So you can actually take a bus, uh, which is like four hours away to Johor. You can finish your hike and then come back the same night. So it's like a one day affair. It's amazing, pretty quick. And uh, you can get a multiple entry visa to uh, Malaysia, like I think for one, six months to one year. You can go any number of times. And a lot of uh, residents in Singapore drive down to Malaysia because the groceries are expensive there. Even the cost of petrol is cheaper. So I know, the, I know a lot of residents and friends who actually drive down there, fill up the petrol, shop for groceries, and then they come back to Singapore. Yeah, and they eat and they eat in Johor because it's much cheaper. The Malaysian ringgit is much yeah. lower. So course, uh, people yeah. will do that. Can I ask you, the both of you, because one thing that is exorbitantly expensive and the price of cars, depending what you buy, can be the price of an apartment in DC because of the tax to keep the number of cars on the road down. So what do you all do? Do you have a car or do you... Uh, because WB is exempt from the tax. That's why I asked the question. Uh, or do you all use public transport? Well, the WBFN of Singapore is not exempt for tax for buying a car. <laughs> you still have to pay for it. But the public transport is very convenient. So, uh, I mean, the MRT, the train station is like two minutes from a, from a house. It's two to five minutes. And so I think it's important uh, to choose the locality where you're in, where, where you have bus or train services. And uh, in case if it's too far or if it's not well connected, I think it's easy to just find a taxi that would be cheaper because the, I think the rent for parking can be very expensive as well. So I think it makes sense to not have a car. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't really know why why you would get a car here, honestly, <laughs> because the transportation is just so efficient. Um, and the Singapore is so small, and there's never any traffic, like never. So um, yeah, it doesn't make sense to get a car and like pay for parking and to pay for the tax. So and and I have a I I take the bus uh, usually with my with my baby on the stroller and it's easy for me to just like hop onto even the bus, um, hop in and out and it's, yeah. And then, and then again, the MRT is like fully air conditioned. So even if you're feeling super hot outside, like walking, once you get into the MRT, you're fresh again because <laughs> it's like really cold <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> so now this might be tricky because I'm Singaporean, but you can say what you like. It's fine. What, uh, uh, how do you find, 
uh, well, maybe I should put it another way. What do you, what are your thoughts if you were guiding somebody who was moving to Singapore about Singaporean culture? What are the do's and what are the don'ts? Maybe you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually say that uh, Singaporeans are very, very friendly. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, before DC, I lived in Hong Kong and people are like, I, I think the city, even though the city is quite international, it's not as international as uh, Singapore and people would be really rude. And I, I found Singaporeans to be very welcoming. They're just so warm and friendly and I have so many local friends. It's so easy to get along well with. And uh I think uh, also because we're Asians, we relate to the cultures, you know, uh, very, very, our cultures are very similar. Uh, I think it's easy to get along well with them. That would be my opinion. What, what do you think, Ethi? Um, Actually, you know what? I haven't been out much uh, because we don't have a, a helper and I have a baby with me. So I haven't met any. <laughs> 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 so uh, my my basis is just like just like regu uh, interactions with you know like people I when I go out so um, yeah I agree they're very friendly and they're pretty helpful like say what I was mentioning a while ago when I get into the bus with a stroller there's always gonna be someone there to help me out like if ever I can't like make it to to inside the bus but um, I, but I do ha I have had experiences where they can be a little bit, I would say, um, I guess, kind of, they, they kind of like follow a script or they're, they're, they're just like really into like, I guess, like the efficiency and the timing of things. So sometimes like it comes across a little bit, um, for lack of a better word, a little bit robotic, but, but I mean, it's not like in a bad way. It's just something that you kind of, that you, there are just some people that you encounter like that, but I haven't really had an overwhelming experience um, about it. So those are just like the little quirks, but I mean, every place has it, right? But other than that, it's it's safe. People are polite. Um, never have had a rude encounter or any kind of like racist encounter here. So so yeah, it's it's been good actually. Good, thank you. And. Uh... Again, now we're switching back. Oh, uh, Nidhi, do you have a household help at home? I do. Okay, what tips do you have for people who are going to engage live in household help? Uh, what should they know and, and, and you know the pros and the cons? Obviously the pro is babysitting. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, initially when we hired a helper, we thought like, it's going to be really weird, like having another person at home. I mean, there's lack of privacy and, you know, uh, <laughs> it's going to be good having someone, you know, walking around your house and, but, but then I think eventually you kind of get used to it because you realize the amount of help that you have. And uh, I think you have to see your helper as your friend. And uh, I mean, not too friendly as well. And you have to be strict, but at the same time, be nice because uh, a lot of times when you like when you're like overly nice they kind of like back answer back answer you and then you don't want to get into a fight you don't want that uh, you don't want the negativity you know so you, you, you try to maintain a good relationship but uh, and if they have any problems or something you you can you know help help out be there for them advise them and uh, because you also realize the amount of help, help they are, right? Uh, cons, yeah, like lack of privacy. And uh, I, I guess we kind of like too dependent on her now. And if she like leaves, it would be really difficult for me to like do everything, take care of the baby and teach. Uh, I would say a lot of pros than cons. 
Is your helper uh, from from which just to tell people who are uh, not in Singapore, generally speaking, the helpers are not Singaporeans. Of course, yeah. So you have the, the Indonesians. Living helpers, yeah. Yours is Indonesian. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think Indonesians are nice. They're polite. They're humble, and uh, uh, but but the only thing is like if you have a, a Filipino helper, they they're really good at English and. Your, I mean, your ch- your child has a can can speak better, probably. But like, they but can then, read out books. They can read out books to the children, but not not a lot of Indonesians can read or write. Nidhi, can you um, explain the rules with regarding to hiring household help? Because that's the other thing about Singapore. Things are very regulated. So I'll ask Nidhi to mention the hiring, the, the obligations of employers, and you have a bond that you have to pay to, to yeah. have these helpers. So it's not, you know, just getting an Indonesian. It's a great help, but uh, the employer is also responsible for a few things. Go ahead. Of course. So uh, before you uh, employ your helper, you have to uh, take up a course. And then you have to pass the exam, and only only if you've passed it, then only only then you can hire a helper. So you go through an exam. So we had a class for about two hours, two or three hours, and then you write an exam, and then only if you clear the exam, you can hire the uh, helper. And uh, uh, what I would questions say was, do they mm-hmm. ask? Sorry to interrupt. I'm curious. What <laughs> questions they ask you in the exam? <laughs> so they have a lot of. Uh, Do's and don'ts, and most of them are actually protecting the helper. Like uh, you cannot let the you have also a limited number of hours which you can make them work, and you have to like you also have uh, things like what you're going to give them to eat. You have to make sure they eat uh, fruits. You have to make sure they, they you give fruits and vegetables a balanced diet, and because a lot of uh, families here. I don't want to mention who and what, but they actually uh, give food to the helper on the plate, and they say, "Okay, you're supposed you can. This is your dinner. You can only eat this much. You cannot have a second helping." So those are things which are not allowed, and you cannot make a. You have to give rest to the helper, like for two hours at least in the afternoon. And uh, you have to send them for health checkups every six months, and they get off day on Sundays. You cannot make them work unless you pay them a lot more. Like per day, you have to pay them. And what else do we have? Um, and uh, Singapore has a lot of apartments. You cannot let your uh, Helper clean from the outside of the windows because they're scared the helper might fall out. So you have questions regarding what what is your balanced diet? How many fruit servings do you have to give per day? And uh, all those. And in case if your helper damages the TV, who is liable? Is it the employer or the helper? So think like that. Do you have to pay a bond? Still, uh, we do. So we do. You do? Yeah. 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 Have to pay for them to fly back, fly if, in case. So my helper was in Indonesia, so we had to fly them to Singapore. But now the Singapore uh, government is not letting any outsiders come into Singapore. So uh, since the elections are coming up, uh, they're not allotting helpers to the expats. So the first preference uh, is going to be the Singaporeans and residents. So if our helper were to leave, we cannot get a new one. I, I think uh, for those, uh, I, I, I will say this in, in many, many ways. I can say it. Uh, I'm really glad to hear what Nidhi says. Unfortunately, unfortunately, to our shame, and that's terrible. Uh, Singaporean families have not all of them, just some of them, as is always the case, have not been kind. So these exams and things are really to restrain. There was a recent court case where the family shared the, the the helper and moved them from house to house. Those things are all not legal. So I oh, guess yeah. this is the government way of, which is always the case, a course and fines. And 
I mean, you can almost predict how they manage their management system is quite simple. Fine, prison, laws. Those are the three parameters. Within that, you have freedom. But don't try to, 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 to knock any fences down, because if you do, the other two will kick in. So, I mean, in, in that sense, so I'm glad for the helpers uh, uh, to hear that um, the authorities have, you know, listened and tried to, to help them. Uh, the other thing, though, uh, as Nidhi says, Singaporeans will, and the government will always, always, in the end, especially, I think, with uh, post-pandemic, become very protectionist Singaporeans first, because I guess unemployment is increasing, right? Is that accurate? Unemployment yeah. is increasing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is the judge, anybody, or uh, does anybody have, oh, there's one more question here. What about regional travel and activities that you can do outside Singapore? So there are a lot of little islands which you can travel to from Singapore, take a ferry, like a 15 minute uh, ferry to Palawan. These are these small islands, you can go there visit the church, you know, cycle around, have have a drink or food. And that's that's something which you can do outside Singapore. And also Bali is like one hour away. So, I, I mean, you can travel anywhere to Asia within like four or five hours. So that's quite nice. Any more, any more questions? Uh, the other question, uh, okay, here, um, what is the, uh, how friendly is Singapore to LGBT, uh, LGBTQ uh, uh, families? Mm. Not really sure. I, I haven't really seen that many around. What about you, Kathy? Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't think. And I haven't seen any around either. I yeah, I haven't seen any. Cloud. All I know is that there is one bar here where they can um, go. There's just one gay bar. And it's it hasn't been assigned by the government or anything. But it's just like there's this one place. And everybody just knows that that's where everybody goes. And I guess it's like monitored or something. But other than that, I think it's it's... It's not allowed, right? So that's I why think, I guess. Yeah, I think Kathy, you're right, because I remember hearing that, uh, you know, <clears throat> the World Bank group had to get special, uh, like a special agreement with the government <clears throat> of Singapore to be able to post, uh, you know, staff with same-sex partners in Singapore. It's something I sort of vaguely remember. Uh, because it is perhaps not um, the law. I, I think it's not such. legal. Actually, I think it's not legal if my memory serves me right. I'm not, you know, again, I haven't kept up. Maybe things have changed. But I thought there was a, a, a vote in parliament a few, just a few years ago to, to pushing for a recognition of LGBT. But I think it was overturned by Parliament. I think so. I I, I don't know. I didn't follow that, but I I, I think. Um, so can you share a little? Uh, bit? If I may no? add, do you do you mind? Yeah. I I, I just looked it up on uh, Wikipedia. It's still illegal, though. <laughs> if I mean, there people get to court to try to overturn, but the law is still says it's it's not legal. Thank you very much. It. Yeah. Thank you. What about the hawker food? Would you like to, that's uniquely Singaporean, Kathy and Nidhi. Would you like to uh, comment on the Singapore hawk is such a feature of life? Of course, so hawker center is like one of our favorites <laughs> because we, we stay like uh, very close to the Newton Food Center and uh, the food is cheap and it's really good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I see a lot of locals going there. Like, I, I think most of the people here just eat out. I see most of the people eating out. They hardly cook at home. Because the food is good and, yeah, quite reasonable. 
Right, it's really good. And I think the one here, the one that we have here at Newton is one of the more expensive ones already. Yeah. But um, I think if you go to the other ones, like the ones downtown, they're a lot cheaper, but it's really, really good. And the food, you can't complain. I mean, you can you can have all cuisines here, I think. But um, obviously, some are more expensive than others. Like the Japanese here is like crazy, crazy expensive. But yeah, hawker food is, yeah. Uniquely Singaporean, I think. Yeah. <laughs> did they did they get the UNESCO? Uh, um, like they were it was something that we were asked to vote or put in our whatever. But I don't know if we I didn't follow whether we got the award to make it a heritage. I'm not sure. Nidhi, have you heard? I'm not sure about that as well. No, I'm not either. I, I don't follow it. You know, I don't follow Singapore news that much. I do and I don't, if you know what I mean. I've been away too long. <laughs> <laughs> but the hawker food, we, uh, actually, the, uh, to support Nidhi and Kathy, hawker food is the one thing that is still quite cheap in Singapore and, and actually very, very good. So... Uh, and, and every Singaporean uh, misses hawker food. I think the first place we go to when we go home is let's go down to the hawker center and get some of the food that we miss. So we are coming up to 10 minutes. Uh, it's 9.09. .09, and uh, before we wrap up, does do the, you know, anybody have any more questions that you want to ask uh, Nidhi and Kathy? question what do yeah. you what the most uh, uh, how to say um, the most um, lovely thing that you do in uh, singapore and love and don't love the most uh, lovely thing that you love and don't love in singapore okay if you uh, i think the most the best thing about singapore is it's very green and there are a lot of parks for children, a lot of places to walk around, and most of them are like free. And yeah, a lot of free things to do in Singapore, uh, play areas, parks, etc. And something which I don't like is, sorry, I don't know if I should say this, I don't like bubble tea. <laughs> I love bubble tea. Oh. I love bubble tea. Okay. <laughs> I love bubble tea too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say I would agree with Nadi. What I love most is how green and clean and safe it is here, and just how efficient everything is. I mean, you really you can't complain if, about anything actually if you live here. And then what uh, I don't love, well, especially now because of like the lockdown, is that you can't really. There's nowhere to travel. Like, um, aside from like Sentosa, which is like, it kind of feels artificial there, but um, yeah, there's nowhere to go, like to, I don't know, staycation somewhere where you can have like open sea or something. But I mean, that's just, I guess, um, kind of like a minor, <laughs> yeah. a minor thing. All things and, and also, I think since it's such a small city, you can like just get bored of it. <laughs> yeah, in a sense, it's like because you've like, done everything, and then you know yeah. there's not much to do. Right. Yeah, that's true. Singapore is small. I want to support what they say about Sentosa. I mean, some it's not really a beach, and I can't agree more. And Singapore is very good with man-made things because we are actually very small and flat. So we have reclaimed <laughs> a lot of land to 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 extend because of population and stuff, and to create. So Sentosa actually is true. You can see those big oil tankers, you know, not very far from where you're swimming. So Singapore is not known for beaches, although you're surrounded by water because we're an island. But I mean, you compare Sentosa and Boracay, I mean, you're not talking the same thing. You know, I mean, it's not natural, so. And we can yeah. clearly see, Yvonne, that you are on Boracay Beach right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and Singapore 
very small. I, I can say all these things. Singapore is small. So there is that, again, you know, I think as in all things in life, there's the good and the bad. The upside is it's safe, it's regulated, it's efficient, but, you know, the opposite side is that it can be sometimes quite claustrophobic because, you know, it's like go five feet and no more. Five foot, one, uh, five feet and one inch and you're in trouble, you know? So up and down. But right now, I'd love to be in Singapore because I feel safe. And <laughs> they control everyone and put them all into prison if they don't wear a mask. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so before I hand over to Padmini to wrap up, uh, is there just time for one last question? If not, I will hand over to Padmini. I have to finish by saying there's no place like home. So Padmini. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Yvonne. And thank you so much, Nidhi and Kathy. This was such an interesting session. You know, I was so surprised when I looked at the clock and it was already past nine, so I don't, I didn't realize how the time went by so fast. It was fascinating to hear from both of you. Uh, so thank you for sharing uh, your experiences and being so candid and yet uh, very respectful of uh, Singapore and the culture and the people over there. It's, it's a fine balance, but you, you did it, you did it. Uh, and thank you, Nidhi, for all the work that you're doing for WPFN. We really, really appreciate uh, it. I know, believe me, it's valuable work, what you're doing. Uh, you're there for anyone who needs you, and that's the most important thing. So, um, and uh, the last comment I would like to make is that, you know, uh, having lived in so many different and beautiful places, and then the question that Kareen asked that, uh, yet, you know, you find things to that you don't like about that place. And I've come to the conclusion that the only reason is that that place is not home. And so you always feel a little uncomfortable uh, because you're not in your own skin, in a sense. So, uh, but I think all of us do a wonderful job of adapting and trying to fit in and making a beautiful life wherever we go. And, not, and, the, and these days, not just a beautiful life, but you know, following uh, our careers and making our time there productive. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for the beautiful community uh, that I'm so grateful for, all the people who joined today and to listen to this Thursday travel. And Sarah, if you'd like to say something and we wrap it up. Uh, uh, no, I, I guess you put it so beautifully, uh, you know, explaining, and uh, I guess this is exactly how you know, we all feel. Uh, but thank you very much, Nidhi and Kathy, uh, for your time and sharing with us your experience. It's, uh, it's, it's not always easy being, you know, moving to a new place, but Singapore certainly seems to be one of the favorite places uh, from how you've uh, put it. So thank you very much for your time and thank you everyone for joining. Bye. Thank you Take all care. so much. Bye. Take care. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.